Good morning, folks. I trust you're well as we uh, reach another Sunday, as we work our way through the weekend, and hopefully we'll get a bit of encouragement and uh, something to reflect on as we work our way through the day. Uh, we've been working our way through the New Testament. We've reached the book of Revelations, the last book of the Bible and the last book of the New Testament. And uh, we're looking at chapter five today, which is a nice short chapter. And I hope my comments will be fairly short as well, because um, very often people have other places they want to uh, go to with regards to worship through the day, live streams and uh, such like. And uh, I certainly wouldn't like to uh, overburden people with uh, too much to consider. But we're looking at Revelation chapter 5, and we're going to read that chapter hopefully together, and uh, we'll see what we might make of it, as we have another glimpse of a vision of John into uh, heaven itself and the throne of God. From the beginning then of Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and, a, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. And I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Amen indeed. I'm just going to pick out a few comments for this quite magnificent scene that we see if you can visualize what's taking place here between the last chapter and and this and what's taking place within it we we see a vision of god with this scroll in his hand and uh, the scrolls that were often written those days they would be rolled up and we see that it's got seven seals on the outside of it and perhaps it's been rolled up in such a way that it it, it almost concertinas of it and these seals are found along the, the edge of it so that as we'll see over the, the coming days, a seal might be broken and a little bit red, and then another seal broken, the next bit red, again and again and again, until everything is opened up. But when this seal is first presented to us in our reading today, it's all sealed up and nothing in it can actually be read at this point. And the only person who's able to uh, actually open those seals, the only person that's worthy to take that scroll, is the Lamb. And this is a clear adoration of Jesus Christ as being the only one that's able to open this, uh, as being likened to the Lamb, the, the Root of David, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who's conquered, the one who died, who was slain, and also is, is a ransom for all. And so, again, so much of the terminology that's being used here is terminology that we find in, in some of the Gospel uh, writings, and we will continue to find more of it again when we look into the Gospel of John, but particularly Matthew, Mark and Luke, 
we should, prior to this being written, uh, certainly have this kind of language as well. It's clearly elevating Christ above absolutely everything um, and everyone except the one who's actually on the throne. I've mentioned in recent days that, that he's brought on a par with God the Father uh, in so many of the titles that are, are mentioned here, but certainly far above everybody else. And we see worship being offered by those who are around the throne, the, the four living creatures who have uh, prominent roles as cherubs protecting that throne of God, the angels that are all around, and particularly these 24 elders that we see described um, who, who are there around the throne as well, who have crowns on their heads and who sit upon thrones, who again are worshipping Christ in this particular role. We've got all sorts of symbology that's mentioned here as well. The number seven is something that's um, figuring uh, quite prominently in, in a lot of what we're reading here. Uh, seven, uh, if, if you take some of the numerological meanings of gematria, uh, these, these, the number seven is particularly thought to have represented perfection and particularly heavenly perfection. So within heaven itself, this number seven is being attributed to this lamb in a number of different ways. He's got seven horns, perhaps representing authority and power. He's also got uh, seven eyes, which we're told uh, what that means when it says that uh, these are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And so we see that again this, um, this, this joining again of uh, both the Lamb and also the Spirit of God in, in what's taking place here. Um, we have harps mentioned. For the singing that's about to take place, we have bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And certainly incense was used in worship, in Jewish circles, at times of prayer. And often, uh, particularly in Revelation, incense is referred to as being the prayers of God's people. But as the incense arose, the prayers of God's people would arise as well. And they would be sweet smelling and they would be palatable to God. The idea of using incense was to accompany the prayers that God might find them pleasing. And so we see that same kind of symbology used there, uh, figuratively, um, of, of the prayers of all people, the expectation of all people, the hopes of all people uh, in, in what they, they hope of God. And Lamb is right in the midst of all these prayers. And perhaps we put in mind of the thoughts of, in the New Testament of Christ being an intercessor, the intercessor of prayer, uh, and takes our prayers and, and hands them or lays them before God. It's on our side when it comes to presenting these prayers in a good light. All this worship is taking place. Um, these different individuals and creations are, are shouting Amen. They're singing together and they're singing about the, the praise and the glory of the one on the throne and the Lamb who's in the midst of the throne at this particular time. Really quite powerful language uh, that we're finding being used here. And what will be really interesting now, of course, the anticipation and the scene has been set for the opening of the scrolls. Um, John wept because he thought nobody was going to be able to open them. But when the lamb steps forward and is able to, uh, to take this scroll, now the anticipation is there. The, the scene is set to see just what might be written on them. And I hope your interest peaked as well as over the next few days we start to look at what's contained within these scrolls because there's some dramatic scenes that are to be unfolded here as well with those thoughts i'll leave those thoughts i'll link, we'll have a wee word of prayer and, and get on with our day and i want to encourage you to to worship wherever you might um because there are all sorts of offerings available today uh, this sunday um in, in on this particular channel will be uh have both a worship service and also a sermon that includes some comments on uh, Revelation 3 that we looked at just a couple of days ago. Um, so I hope that if you do tune into that, that you'll enjoy some of those further comments of what we might think about there as well and some of the challenging messages that we find within the book of Revelation. But let's have a wee word of prayer to set ourselves up for the day at the start of the day or whenever it is that you're perhaps uh, watching this and, and whenever you're watching this and wherever. And maybe as we work our way through the day, we'll be, be blessed by something that's brought back to mind, but also blessed by God himself as we approach his throne of grace in prayer even now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, as we consider the words of Revelation, we see a dramatic 
and glorious vision of heaven itself. We see you being worshipped. We see your son being worshipped. And we pray that as we uh, acknowledge that scene, as we acknowledge uh, your power and glory and might, that uh, putting things in that perspective, and when we consider that for our lives and all that we do in a given day, that, that keeping that perspective of your righteousness and your glory and, and where you, you stand in, in relation to everything in the whole universe, that, that we might be blessed by that in recognizing that the one who is so all-powerful loves us so deeply, individually and especially collectively. And as we reflect on these things, even in these visions that we find in Revelation, which are difficult things perhaps to understand, but nonetheless we get a glimpse into heaven itself, a glimpse into to all that majesty that uh, it has been proclaimed and also all that attention that's paid to, to things that are going to take place on earth, things that took place uh, when these things were first written and perhaps also have some influence on us even down to our own day and age. Help us to be influenced by them, be influenced by the messages that we find there and help us to worship fully and enter into that worship fully and uh, wholeheartedly as we work our way through this day. We pray that you would bless us. We pray that you would take care of us in all the circumstances that we might find ourselves in. You would take care of those that we care about, and even those that uh, we perhaps don't know very well, but we come into contact with. Help us to, to emulate Christ in his dealings with us before everyone that we might meet this day. Continue with us, please, we pray. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you found these things interesting. As I say, I hope your, your appetite has been piqued for reading a little bit more of Scripture and particularly this, this incredible book of Revelation. But until the next time, God bless, take care and bye for now.